Hello. Today I'm going to demonstrate the spurious emission feature on the MS2691A Spectrum Analyzer. I'm going to use my internal generator as a source. So the first thing that I need to do in the Spectrum Analyzer is go to the Measure option. Under Measure, I have Spurious Emission. I will select that. Now, when running Spurious Emission, it's probably best to do a single sweep. As it's sweeping, you see the numbers are coming up. I have a passing result. I can look at the previous page. There's actually 15 segments in the default. See, my fundamental actually is at 900 megahertz, and you see that's where the largest signal is here. So I'm going to change my signal generator power level to create a failing condition. So I'll make that minus 10 dBm. And I'm going to sweep again. Now, as you can see, under these conditions, I have a failing condition in segment 3 at approximately 900 megahertz. I can actually display the segment for the failing condition, go to segment 3, and I can see right here is where my failure is at around 900 megahertz. Now I'd like to show how powerful this application can be for doing a simple harmonic test. I'm going to test my fundamental through the fourth harmonic. I've already set this measurement up in advance in order to save time. Now if I go to recall, to recall the measurement. And it goes through and it does the measurement in four segments as I've set up. You see my fundamental at 900 megahertz, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and fourth harmonic. Now I'd like to create a condition where there would be a failure. So in the signal generator, we'll change the power level to minus 10 dBm. And we'll go ahead and sweep that again. As you can see, I have a failure and I'm failing at my fundamental and my third harmonic. So I can go in to measure and actually look at each one of those bands. Looking at segment four right now, I can change that to be segment three you can see, I'm just barely failing my limit of minus 60. Also look at segment 1. And here I'm failing my limit of minus 13. Now the nice thing about this setup is that I can create different parameters for each segment. For instance, segment 4, um, I'm using a reference of minus 50 dBm and a resolution bandwidth of 3 kilohertz. Now that compared to segment 1, where I have a lot more power in my signal, I'm using a 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth, and my reference is 0 dBm. I can also have different limits for different segments. For instance, my limit for segment 1 is minus 13, 2 is minus 50, 3 is minus 60, and 4 is minus 80. So as you can see, there's a lot of powerful things you can do with this first search. They'll save a tremendous amount of time in performing measurements. That concludes our demonstration. Thank you.